Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. Today, we're going to be dissecting our thoughts on a Russell Westbrook trade to the Los Angeles Lakers. But before we hop into all that, you know we got to give a quick shout out to our subscriber today, as always. And today is going to be Sam Gofar. Thank you so much, bro, for like, commenting, and subscribing, turn on post notification, and showing so much love and support towards our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. We greatly appreciate it. Now, Greg, earlier this week, the Russell, Russell Westbrook was traded to the Los Angeles Lakers for Montrezl Hero, Contavious Caldwell Pope, Kyle Kuzma, and a 2021 22nd overall pick in the first round. Man. What are your thoughts on this overall trade? Did the Lakers give up too much? Were, were the Washington Wizards bamboozled? I mean, what are, what are your overall thoughts on this entire trade package? I don't think the Lakers gave up too much. I mean, Harrell, we've seen, I mean, he had some flashes, but really wasn't really consistent for us um, on the defensive end. Um, he gave up a guy like KCP. I'm kind of just kind of just a little upset about it because I think he was developing and get, provided great minutes on the, as a wing defender. And then he improved his shooting percentages from the three point line. And then Kyle Kuzma just really just didn't find his, his spot in the offense offense kind of inconsistent so with Anthony Davis joining the team so and then the 20 second pick I mean not a lot of value there but um so I like the trade I think some people are concerned on how it will work um how Russell will come in and just be is he going to be the main main option is LeBron going to be the main option I mean it will will the spacing be kind of cluttered we don't know I guess we gonna have to see but I, what I like about it is that we're gonna the Lakers will have a full training camp session this summer where they can bond on and off the court and just really get this chemistry and build this team up to get them ready for the season yeah, and, and I know a lot of people are upset that they traded for Russell Westbrook rather than a Buddy Hill. I mean, would you yeah. have rather had Buddy Hill just because, you know, he fixed a shooting problem? Or are you more high on a guy like Russell Westbrook, who's a perennial all-star at this point in his career? I think Russell Westbrook is a triple threat, triple double threat. So I think you got to bring in a guy who brings who just brings so much on the offensive end and can help take the pressure off of Anthony Davis and LeBron James during the regular season. But it's, to answer your question, I mean, I think Buddy Hill doesn't really move the needle. It helps you out in the shooting wise, but he doesn't really do anything other than that i mean his shot creation ability is eh to me and then he doesn't really play make so i think you bring in a guy like russell he can do both of those very very well yeah i i, I like the russell westbrook trade more so than the buddy healed one just because i feel like russell westbrook he, he definitely brings a lot more to his game. I mean, obviously, you know, he's a little bit more of a dynamic player, actually a lot more of a dynamic player yeah. in comparison to a guy like Buddy Hill, who, you know, just shoots the three ball and doesn't really have a best, a, a great in-between game, nor does he finish well at the rim. You know, I don't really consider him an all-around type of prospect like Russell Westbrook. But I do have a little bit of concern with the overall fit, but I still feel like it can work. I mean, we already know that it, there's going to be a lot of incompetent spacing on the floor. Uh, we don't know necessarily how much Russell Westbrook will struggle just trying to get his feet through the door. I mean, obviously, they're going to have a little bit of issues with cohesion and chemistry to start the season, just given the fact that, you know, this is a roster that's going to be torn down, essentially, you know, kind of be re rebuilt to a certain degree, bringing in new assets uh, alongside Russell Westbrook. But I mean, overall, I still feel like it could work. I mean, when you get three all-star caliber players together, I don't see how too many teams can really guard them defensively. A lot exactly. of people are bringing up this zone defense. Well, if you go back to last year's postseason um, run with the Los Angeles Lakers, they dismantled two of the best zone defenses in the entire NBA. We saw what they did to the Houston Rockets in the second round of the postseason, and we saw what they did to the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals. I feel like adding Russell Westbrook, yes, he does hurt your spacing and you know your overall shooting for your yeah. team from that standpoint, but he does bring a lot of things to the table. Um, he's going to be able to, you know, operate in a pick and roll with Anthony Davis. I think that's going to be a yeah, tremendous that's thing to be watch. Scary. Yeah, um, I think AD is going to get a lot more lob opportunities. Right. And then you also have to deal with the fact that, you know, when you have guys that are exceptional ball handlers that can get downhill like a Russell Westbrook or LeBron James, and then you can have Anthony Davis space the floor out. Yes, he didn't shoot all that well this year, but he's still capable of knocking down shots. Just go back and watch game two of the Western Conference uh, Finals last postseason. He knocked down a three pointer to send the Lakers ho uh, home with a win that night. So, I mean, there's just a lot of there's a lot of things that you can look forward to with this unit. And there's a lot of things that you have a few concerns about. But overall, we haven't seen the 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 final control construction of this overall roster but so far I do like what you know we've been able to acquire this offseason uh, specifically getting Russell Westbrook but 
Transitioning to their offseason additions that they need to make. I mean, what starting off with like this Dennis Stroder signing trade. I mean, what value can we get out of that? Is there a possibility of a Taylor Horton Tucker trade? I mean, what what are your overall thoughts on those situations right there? I mean, they need to make a decision what they're gonna do with Shorter. I think that you can't lose Shorter for anything. I think what you got, you brought him in free agency. I think you cannot just let him walk. So I think packaging him with Dennis Shorter and Taylor Horton Tucker, I think you package them and see if you can get I think that the Chicago Bulls and the New York Knicks have interest in Dennis Schroeder. So if we can package it and get somebody like a Reggie Bullock or any role player on the team who brought value to the Chicago Bulls or the Knicks, I think you can bring back some value on that side. But you cannot let Dennis Schroeder walk, in my opinion. Right. And I think, you know, with Taylor Horton Tucker, I think he's an interesting asset. I don't know what exactly what trade package he will be thrown in because, you know, I think the Lakers are kind of done. Um, trying to get all-star caliber players. They're just trying to get some complimentary pieces. And we know Rick, Taylor Hunt, Horton Tucker's still on his rookie contract. So the money's going to be a little bit iffy. So I'm a bit curious as to, you know, seeing what they'll do with him if they do end up trading him. But we also got to think about guys like DeMar DeRozan, Carmelo Anthony, um, so many NBA veterans that are willing to take pay cuts to, you know, come to the Los Angeles Lakers and compete for a championship for a season or two. I mean, what are some off-season additions that you think they should make I think they need to bring in some shooting and bring back guys like Avery Bradley and and Dwight Howard, guys that were on your team who made good impacts. I mean, they lost Avery Bradley in the bubble. They ended up winning without him, but it was that not having him on the court in the bubble. I think what he brings in his shot creation ability, his defensive intensity on that side definitely helped them. And then with Dwight Howard, just bringing another center. I mean, Montrez Harrell didn't work out for us on the defensive side. And then Mark Gasol just doesn't have the same mobility as we saw, you know, back back then when he won that defensive player of the year. So bringing a guy like a, a do-it-all center like Dwight Howard, who already knows his system, is going to help a lot. And I think they should also look for look to bring back Marquise Moore, bring in a guy like Patty Mills, who's a 39% career three from the three-point line um maybe even jeff green jj reddick uh maybe even carmelo anthony a, a sniper um great shot creation ability and could just be on the wing and just help help the lakers um in that category right right i would also wouldn't be upset if they tried to go after a guy like wayne ellington uh, yeah. you know what i'm saying like th th this is a guy that can space the floor out he's got a nice in-between game he's pretty productive offensively i don't know if you know they're they're interested in getting a guy like spencer dinwiddie i know that he's um, trying to acquire a 20 million dollar contract per year so i mean there's things with that and then obviously we already know that uh Dennis Schroeder is looking to be on his way out. So, I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you trying to get Reggie Bullock or whomever it may be. The only thing that sucks is that, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to really acquire anybody in a three-team trade because typically those only revolve around, like, all-star caliber players like a Ben Simmons, yeah. a Kawhi Leonard, you know, guys of that caliber. But it, it And it also does suck because, you know, Goran Dragic was also picked up by the Miami Heat with his player exception of uh, player option just yesterday. So, I mean, there's not too many options necessarily that – are necessarily eye-popping if you're the Los Angeles Lakers, but there are some productive fits out there on the market that you could possibly get for cheap, especially if guys are willing to take a pay cut. But let us know who you guys would like to see on the Los Angeles Lakers roster next year. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode with the Ball Fake Podcast. I'm your host, Nicely Chunky Benny, and I'm here with my co-host, Greg King, and we out.